Do you mind just starting by telling me a little bit about what you, what your kind of, how you interpreted the brief of the project and, and, and a little bit about the chair? Yeah, so my starting point was to design something I need first because that point had just helped me to orientate what I'm going to design. So a product for my room, a chair, and then from there, I start to look at some inspiration all, all over the internet. I looked at like a very large variety, all the furniture stuff, because what I was looking at were the, the genre formula and how you actually create something like the flat pack from CNC technology. My theory starting from no glue, no screw and no problem at all which is trying to illustrate the product that you can assemble without any fastening tool. I'm just trying to push myself further over the boundary of that, like trying to see if, it's, if, if it was possible by on, like using the CNC machine technology, you can actually assemble into a, a functional product. So other than the CNC, what tools did you use to make this, this chair? Oh, I think we were talking about the finishing, just like yeah. you have to put a little bit finish for the, the sharp edges because that's a human using product. You have to make sure it's safe mm -hmm. to be sit on and to, I, from the process of assembling as well. Other tool I use at the workshop is um, some sanding. You, you did have some issues with your production. We ended up making it twice because... Three times. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> three times. In the spirit of trying to not be wasteful, we've kept the all of the parts from one of those chairs. Where are the chairs now? I have the main one in the other room. Yeah, I still and I still bought it. Are you, are you using it? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything you would change about it now that you've lived with it for a little while? I would change the design a little bit because during... You know, we were given just like a, a very tight time frame to finish the whole project, which were only three months. Oh yep. no, 10 weeks. It's not only ten, three months. 10 weeks was the length of the course, but actually you had to do the robotics module as well. So you really oh, had yeah. six weeks basically for the yeah. entire thing. Yeah, yep. that's even harder. Than, um, but you didn't just press play on the CNC, right? Yeah. There was a little bit more involved. So can you talk a little bit about what was involved in actually making it? Firstly, I learned, I learned to use software in a very short time, which is the uh, Fusion 360 Cam. Yep, yep. Yeah, I had to learn it. Like I had to push myself like to adopt that, which is like help you to save a lot of time and energy and materials as well. Also, I talked to you, Rick, to help me like narrow down what sort of problem that I have created during my design. This is very useful because there's a lot of constraint and limitation from that technology sensors as well. Like you have mm -hmm. to build up a plan. You have to consider the, the material, the thickness of the material and the finish of this as well. And some kind of different tool, like because different tool gives you different finish as well. Yeah, this is all the thing I learned through this course. Great. And yeah, like I would say that the, I really love this design. It is amazing in a sense that it, it achieves the shape that it achieves. Anyone can make this if they have access to a kind of CNC router, which, you know, sounds silly in some ways because it's quite a, an advanced machine, but more and more, it's very common for people to have access to a CNC either in an educational setting or a lab like ours, or just using a low cost CNC. Uh, that they built themselves or, you know, purchased. So I think it's really relevant to be thinking about furniture that you can make yourself. Have you done anything more recently in your design practice that you think is inspired by this? I actually worked on a, a pegboard with my other friend, which yep, is that's right. uh, sort of a little bit different because this product actually are employing two bolts, but it's still in a, a flat pack boundaries like everything can be cut out of one piece of plywood mm -hmm. I've seen technologies as well and what I learned from this course which is the the tolerance is really important and depends on the if the if the assembly is actually for a permanent purpose then 
the tolerance should be very tight. And if the, like in the other way, the pegboard, we have a lot of holes and you put it down to it because this is the like a, a, a configuration depends on the personal use. They may change it like every month. So at this time, the tolerance should be easy for them to put it down in and put like pull up the down. Like, okay, um, so the, the tolerance is important for reuse as much as it is for the first time you use it. It's incumbent upon us to think about the full life of the object. And, and that, you know, I think the bigger conversation is how do I pass this thing down through generations? If you were to take the class again, what would you do differently in the project? What would you spend a bit more or less time on, et cetera, or however you want to answer? I like you have to get a really good, I would say, be patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Hey, thanks so much, Danny. I'll, I'm going to stop the recording now.